Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav Gulecha and I welcome you to this channel. Uh, in this video, I will be sharing uh, about some of my learnings from the Sarnath visit. So if you are a, like a person who is going for a first time like me and you are not aware of this place and uh, uh, so basically in this, the aim of the video is to guide you so that you can, you know, uh, be better informed. Like even one person better if you are informed by seeing this video, my work will be done, right? So. Uh, there is another video that I have made on my three days, how I spent in Sarnath. That is another video that I have made. This is a video on my learnings, my main learnings from my three day visit, right? And then I will make one or two more videos on Sarnath. So uh, I will create a playlist uh, on this channel uh, named Sarnath. So all the Sarnath related videos that I have made will be available in the playlist. So you can check every everything and then accordingly plan your travel for Sarnath. And if you have any questions, you can definitely mention the comments and I will respond to you. So let's start the video in terms of the my learnings. So the first learning, I've just made all the points so that I don't digress. So the first learning is, see, if you are going, see, decide on the purpose of your visit to Sarnath. See, a lot of people uh, who come to Sarnath are people who come, who come to visit Varanasi, right? Who are like Hindus and they come to visit Varanasi. The, there are uh, many holy uh, sites, Ganges, River Ganges is there and the Kashi Vishwanath temple is there and a lot of uh, holy places are there for Hindus in the Sarnath. So they come to uh, in, in Varanasi. So they come to Sarnath and that is like just, you know, a cursory check you know, a quick, uh, you know, checklist item, right, uh, before they move back to Varanasi. So they just devote like a one day's visit, uh, uh, kind of a day day visit is there. They come in the morning and by afternoon they leave and they check like three, four places and they leave. But if you're a sincere follower of Buddha's teachings and your main purpose is to basically, see these places, they hold a lot of spiritual energy. Sarnath is one of the four places which Buddha said to the uh, followers to visit, which is like the first place is the birthplace, which is Lumbini in Nepal. Second place is with where Buddha got enlightenment, which is uh, Bodh Gaya in Bihar. Third place is Sarnath, where Buddha got the, uh, where Buddha gave the first discourse, first discourse to the disciple and set the wheel of dharma, dharma in motion. Fourth place is Kushinagar, which is where Buddha got the Parinirvana, right? So these four, so Sarnath is one of the four sites which are very, very highly spiritual places which Buddha said that you must visit. So, you have to decide that what bent of mind you want to go there. It's just to, uh, as a checklist or just to click the photos or you want to go deep and soak in the spiritual energy of this place. Now, why I, as I explained in the last video, I got a strong inclination to visit this place because it was necessary for my spiritual mission of spreading Buddha's teachings. So if I have to spread Buddha's teachings, I need to get that spiritual energy. And I got, was I was getting this intuition for the past two years. And finally, you know, I, I visit. So first of all, my first lesson, which I have not covered in the points, but the first lesson I will say is that if you get a, if you are guided strongly to visit Sarnath or any of the Buddha's sites, do not delay, right? Do not delay, just go. Right? Because you will get a lot of spiritual energy when you visit that place. Right? So don't delay like me. I delayed for two years. You don't delay like that. Right? Now, uh, spend two full days. So it's not that, uh, as I said, don't do it like a checklist visit, like you spend like three, four hours. No, this is not a place like this. If you want to diligently visit Sarnath, get the spiritual energy, at least devote two days. If you can devote three days, then very good. But two days is good enough. Right, where you can see all the places, cover all the places, you can meditate also. Ideally, I will say three. I did the three day visit, right? So I will say three days, but minimum two days you should plan, right? Not less than two days, right? So plan accordingly, right? Don't com just complete a checklist. When you visit Sarnath, so it should not be blindly, you know, just visiting the things and taking photos. Your approach should be complete mindfulness in terms of your walking you know just keep wandering this is how you 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 you, you i just read in one of the books uh, that when you visit these holy places you just wander there is no agenda in mind there is no too much planning there is no too much constrained schedule because if the schedule is so much constrained then your mind is there whereas in these places you just wander right you just walk mindfully gather the energy of this place visit the temple meditate for some time, visit the lawns, 
there's a lot of open spaces open greenery that is there visit right that you can feel the buddha there buddha is everywhere but you can really feel his presence in sarnath if you are your eyes ears your sense faculties are open your senses you are uh, you have a certain subtlety is there in you and you are not tired or agitated very very important point this again i forgot to mention make a note in my points but it just came as i am making the videos remember if you are tired very tired take rest like if you come in day one so it, like i did like when i came that day because i was so tired i just took the rest so took the rest take the rest have a good night sleep stay in a good hotel right get a full night sleep so second day when you are i mean when you wake up you are in a you are not tired or you know you can then you can uh, 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 you know visit the place better second don't get don't have visit with an agitated mind that means when your mind is agitated like you have some some petty quarrel with some vendor or something you know it can uh, kind of you know break your mental balance so just leave the petty quarrel aside you know just let go of things right because at these places you need to have a clear mind right a clear mind to soak in that energy if your mind is agitated then it will not happen so don't uh, you know uh, just ignore things there are a lot of people vendors and people that you will find uh, you know which you may not agree with so just let go of those things right okay right so better to come solo i went solo right so and because of support of my family i could do that solo visit try to do solo because when you come solo then you have you are alone you know when you have alone time you have reflection time if you come with lot of you know i i see people who come in groups then there is like you cannot spend that much time you there so too too much of you know um, chatting and you know gossiping and pictures clicking and everything if you really want to come here try to come solo or you can come with one or two like minded friends or you, your spouse who is again like minded if your spy, spouse has nothing to do with buddhism then she will for her it will not be a very good place to visit i mean it will not be you cannot do a long visit here but if you both are followers of the buddha and you are meditators do come with your spouse and it is definitely very good right my wife is very very supportive uh, but because of some half yearly exams and all at my uh, kids uh, school I, i i had to come solo i will definitely come again with my family but try to come solo and children if you bring then see children will get bored beyond a point one day is fine but second third day if you meditate your kids will not let you meditate right so uh, decide if you want to come with kids then you know there you have it's a choice that you'll have to make best i will say is come to these places solo or with some like minded friend or spouse whichever way you can think so right okay now one very important thing that i learned here is that one what one of the biggest learning that i got here is see i when i came here i was a bit naive in terms of my expectations from this place i thought there will be monks who will, who will be you know meditating and there will be monks who will be available in the temples to guide you on your meditation and all nothing like that is hap- that happens here right see what i have realized when i come to this this place is see buddha had preached a path right and to walk the path buddha did not say make temples for me and you know uh, 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 and the opposite has happened you know now people don't follow the teachings of the buddha and they just construct temples after temples after temples right because why temples because then temples you get the donations right so lot of those that stuff is also there i did not find any monk right is my three days right welcoming right Uh, welcoming enough for giving you some guided meditation only one i i found and that also i got the guidance in my akashic readings that i was i will be finding one person who will guide me so i'll make a separate video on that my chance meeting with the lama who gave me profound knowledge in sarnath that you can check in the sarnath playlist that is available so if you come with the intention you think that you know you will get some guidance and you know lot of you know some you know monks who will be meditating and you know and all nothing like that is happening you know monks they are you don't even find them when you visit in the temples uh, they are not even available and they are all not even forthcoming right that is one thing i you know in one of the monasteries i'll not take the name of the monastery uh, 
I that one 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 of person that I came across, he said that these monks who are there, they didn't don't even follow the precepts properly, right? Because there is they are just there, right? So what the realization that I got was, and and I found people who are not monks, like the caretakers of the temples, they I found them to be much more forthcoming. Like there was a, a caretaker of a particular temple where I went, and I said I want to meditate. Is there a place? He and the meditation room was like after three floors, and he took me. And there was another monk who said, "Why? Where are you taking? Why are you taking him inside?" And that caretaker said that he wants to meditate. So he took me to the third floor, and then he told me when I reached third floor, he said, "I have a problem in my in my in my leg. My leg hurts when I." So just because I said that I want to meditate. he said he did not give me any excuse he took me to the three floors and he took me uh, to that meditation he could have said he could have given me excuse these are people who are following the really the buddha's teachings right and not monks you know who have nothing to do and who are not at all forthcoming so this was a big big realization for me that if you and what i realized is see i have i have had my past lives where i was getting trained as a monk and you know all that is there so i have a lot of fascination for people in the you know maroon robes and orange robes and i have a lot of fa- yellow robes i have a lot of fascination i ha- held a lot of fascination for those people but when i came here i realized that it is not about the robe that you wear it's about your conduct buddha's teaching is not about the robe it's big about the monk that monk has a something special value and the other person is doesn't have a, any value a lay person buddha's teaching was for both the lay person as well as for the monks right and buddha's teaching was on the conduct so and again in dhammapada buddha says that a person who wears the robe and doesn't follow the uh, uh, path is no good the robe is no good but a person who doesn't wear the robe but who have a pure and tran- tranquil mind and who follow my path are the true monks so what i realized the most important thing is i dropped you know that fascination that i had for monasteries and that feeling in me that you know forget forget everything the family life and go and live in a monastery right that all went i realized that even though i am not wearing a robe i can live like a monk in a family life right i can have the pure conduct so it's not that the monks are somewhere at a pedestal and you know we are as a lay people we are not so that that is a wrong way to think about things i i hope some of the people are resonating with what i am saying is what i also understood is that i also understood this very very important thing is that why buddha's knowledge could not continue you know beyond a point buddha's knowledge people don't follow is because when buddha died when buddha got took parin nirvana buddha said that my sangha will take care and when you see the sangha when you see the sangha sangha is the torch bearer of buddha's knowledge and when you see the sangha itself is not taking taking the buddha's knowledge further see i am not saying that all sanghas are bad or you know all monks are bad i am not saying that i am saying that even in sarnath i found this particular thing is that in the temples that i went there was not a single monk only one temple where i went there was where there was a person who interacted with me but in the other temples not a single person was there to guide anyone who is coming for on the precepts on the buddhist path then how will people come on the buddhist path and then i realized that thing that if i have to do something i don't need to rely on the support or the crutches of the monks or sanghas and i have to start myself whatever i have to do i have to learn follow it in my conduct and share it on my channel through whatever work i can do in this life so my task is that if i can help 100 people come on the buddha's path through my channel and work i do my work will be done i will go peacefully from this world right so that is what buddha said buddha teaching was be your own savior do not rely on anyone else right so yes there are sanghas there are support mechanisms that are available but don't go looking out for these support mechanisms when you are on the path definitely you will find like minded people and and these people will come but in sarnath i was very disappointed in that regard because there was no one to guide no one to you know even talk to you and they were not even forthcoming right so so that was my sorry if it offends anyone but that was my big learning don't go with some high expectations if you want to learn meditation there are vipassana centers that are there 
across india you can or in burma there are some mahasi meditation centers there you can go and meditate and there are like programs where you can learn meditation that you do but coming in sarna then you come for a three day visit and you think that there will be someone to guide and all nothing like that happens right so that was my one big realization okay now uh, don't go when the weather is hot right this is one mistake that i did i went see i it's not a mistake when it happens it has to happen right i got the opportunity that window i went there and it happened but my suggestion to you is that take care of the weather that is there in sarnath september end it was sweltering heat you know and i will share the pictures in some other video i had i was you know i was like and i i sweat a lot so it was a difficult uh, for three days for me try doing it going for the visit november to february that's the time where you visit and that's the time where there is a lot of rush where the accommodation is not very much easily available and all right but maximum people who come there in sarnath come between the time of november to february that is the time where you should try to come don't come in the summer months and all right okay if you are traveling in the hot months right where you know that there will be some temperature humidity and all is there do not make the mistake like i did of booking a non ac room right i booked a non ac room and then i found that it was i was not i will not be able to live in that and i shifted I, luckily i got a, a ac room in the temple in the monastery right so so that was a, i was lucky on that part uh, because there was no rush so in the monastery the rooms were available so try booking a ac room in a good hotel in advance don't rely on the monastery thing because if you come here and you find there are no rooms in the monastery then that will be a problem so try booking a ac room if you are coming in the hot months november onwards i think ac is not required so that is perfectly fine right then uh, rather than visiting monasteries so now what has happened is in sarnath there is the main sarnath temple then there are the archaeological remains those are the two places so in the sarnath temple attached to the temple is the uh, mahabodhi the the place where uh, the buddha got uh, gave the sermon so that sarna temple and two and the archaeological remains those two are the main places that you need to visit then what happens is there are a lot of like country wise there are monasteries like thai temple is there then uh, japanese temple chinese temple uh, uh, korean temple vietnamese temple uh, sri lankan temple lot of temples are there where you when you go there there is nothing it's basically the temple where buddhas uh buddha's statue is there and this is a basic temple now in, uh, important thing to understand is if you have the time you can cover the temples i covered like thai uh burmese there is nothing so burmese you go there is nothing there so don't go in the burmese temple thai temple then i went to the chinese temple japanese temple sri lankan temple but then over over a time i found that there is the same pattern there is nothing very some different thing is there then korean and vietnamese temple cambodian temple i didn't even go right main thing when you go here is see buddha gave the teaching right buddha gave the teaching and buddha said to follow the path and in these places you get the spiritual energy so what we have to do is that we have to be mindful when we visit this place in our walking in our eating you know mindful of that you know the energy of this place and meditate rather than visiting monastery after monastery because the temple after temple because then there is nothing there is a temple only and there is no one to guide you no one to you know you can interact with right so my suggestion is don't you know uh, too much time don't spend on visiting monasteries focus on meditating at the dhammek stoop around the dhammek stoop uh, 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 right and the uh, so attending the evening chanting which i will come right okay now temples now sarnath is a place where the sarnath temple opens by 8 8 pm closes by 6 pm so most likely all these temples they open by around 8 and close by around 5 and entire sarnath closes by around 7 pm right so you have to start early right you have to start by 8 o'clock you have to start and then by 5 o'clock 6 o'clock everything starts to close by 7 pm everything closes right so keep that in mind start early sarnath museum so there is a archaeological museum that is there or sarnath museum it's a good museum you need one one and a half hours to explore that place fully it's a 5 rupees ticket which is online you can buy but uh, it is closed on friday so if you plan on friday then friday it will be closed so that is one thing you can keep in mind right now prefer good hotels 
Right? Don't go for cheap guest houses and all because the facilities will not be good. Right? You will end up repenting. Prefer good hotels, at least decent hotels. And if you are a foreigner, do prefer good hotels. Uh, like foreign residencies there and other hotels are also there. So I have not been there in foreign residency, but there are some good hotels. You can check in Google and everything. So book in advance, especially if you are coming in the rush time, November to February, right? Uh, so that you can do. Sometimes uh, then there are monasteries. So if you are low on budget, you can check on the in the monastery. So you can come like I stayed in the Tibetan monastery where there were a lot of non-AC AC rooms that were available. So you can come in the monastery, which is like Tibetan monasteries near to the Sarna temple. Come and check there. Then uh, uh, in different monasteries, there are availability like Sri Lankan temple, I think. Then there is a Arya Dharmshala, which is uh, opposite the Sarna temple. There also they have rooms. So room availability is there. Only that in the rush time, you might not be able to find the rooms. Right? So that is just the point. So if you're low on budget, you can stay in these places, monasteries or the Dharmshala that is there. Arya Dharmshala is there. Uh, I will give the numbers to the extent possible below, which you can contact. Now, don't miss the evening chanting. So the first, when I came, I was not aware of this. In the Sarna temple, every evening around 6.30 p.m., they do the chanting of the first discourse, Dhamma Chakka Bhavatana Sutra. The first sermon that the Buddha gave, they do the chanting of that in Pali. So do not miss that. See, this is the spiritual energy that we, we need to uh, ingest. Right? So just be in that space. So I don't understand Pali. Right? But just being in that space, in that temple, in that peaceful positive energy with the chanting that is happening, lot of changes happen inside us. Right? So don't miss that. For that, what you have to do is that the temple closes at 6 o'clock. So you have to enter the temple at like 5.45, 5.50. You have to enter before that. And then by 6 o'clock when they, they, they tell all people to go because the temple is closing. So only those people remain, like 10-15 people remain, who are there for the chanting. And then you can occupy your place, you can sit comfortably in meditative pose and just be meditative and then 6.30pm they will do the chanting. So you can attend the chanting. I attended chanting for two days. Right? It was very blissful experience for me. Second day it was raining and all, it was beautiful experience that was there. Right? So do not forget the uh, attending the evening chanting. Now 6.30 p.m. is the time for April to October and then there is another time which is I think a, a bit half an hour earlier uh, for, for November to Jan. That you can check. right? But 6.30 p.m. is around that time the chanting happens. So you have to enter the temple earlier than the temple closure time. Because once the temple is closed, when the temple, then they will not let you enter. right? Okay. Don't fall into the trap of commission agents. There are commission agents everywhere in Sarnath. Especially when you from, from Mananasi, when you come to Sarnath, there is a uh, uh, there is a square where these commission agents will stop the vehicle, right? And and they try to stop the vehicle, but you have don't have to. Especially if you're a foreigner, that's why have the booking in advance and enter directly into the hotel. Don't fall in the trap of these commission agents. They will take their commission for like uh, you know accommodation for. Even sari purchases, there are like Banarsi saris that are get prepared in Sarnath. So they will take you here and there and you know, just for their commission. So do not fall in the trap. You can do your own research, go visit places, visit three, four places, do your own research, find your own, own thing and but don't fall in the trap of these agents. Right? Now, uh, one thing that I have observed and I will like to state here is that I observed that there is a partiality that happens between Indians and foreigners, which the you know the monks of the temple do, right? So there is in the Sana temple I observed that uh, you know there is a, uh, beyond a certain place you are not allowed to go to the Buddha's statue, and I wanted to go further, you know. So I asked for permission. Other also asked for permission. The Indians, so they do not allow. They said you have to check with the uh, you know, monk of the temple, you know, the priest of the temple, and the foreigners were there. They were, they were just allowing them without anything. That according to me is wrong. See, if you have come from 1000 kilometers distance or you have come from 5000 kilometers distance, rules should be the same for everyone. So that created a bit of a agitation in my mind. And then I said, I dropped the agitation. I said, what difference it ha happens, right? Let them let them do that. You know, if, we, if I become agitated and then I question this and all, so it will only create agitation in my mind. But if I'm just sharing these things because if you are 
an indian who is going there so there is always this fascination with the you know uh, gori chamadi you know white skin you know so that fascination still happens uh, in these temples also so if you are, have a white skin and all then they give you more preference and they will discuss with you also more the monks also discuss spend a lot of time discussing with you so maybe i am an indian so that didn't happen that's i will say that's a, a pitiful thing right buddha got enlightened in india and and you know and they these monks they do not even you know uh, entertain indians and they put a lot of preference to the foreigners so again this is just my view this is my experience i am not saying this happens everywhere but this is what i observed very clearly in uh, the temple so that's fine uh, okay now be prepared for people who just now sarnath is a place see understand this sarnath is a place where maximum people come are the people who are basically uh, coming to varanasi who are basically hindus who come in varanasi varanasi is basically the 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 main holy site of many temples like kashi vishwanath and all so they come to saran uh, they come to varanasi and sarnath is basically a day trip for them to just cover the checklist items right they are not like followers of the buddha and all they for them it's like the mix to have covered sarna temple i have covered so these people they come and they make a lot of noise i am not saying everyone who comes from varanasi makes a lot of noise so please don't misunderstand but lot of people who come to sarnath they do not understand that it is a place where it's a meditative place so they make they, sh- they talk loud they you know click pictures they, you know they shout and they do all these things and if you are a person who has come there for meditating and this is a problem i experienced in my meditation around the temple and around in the dhammik near the dhammik stoop is that you know people come and they talk too much loudly and you know gossiping and clicking pictures their only attention is just to click pictures and pictures right so this is not the place for pictures these pictures and all will die but you know it's a meditative place only few people i think one foreigner was there i was there and one sri lankan uh, uh, ek uh, one sri lankan team had come who were doing a very peaceful chanting but three four people i mean uh, we were there who were doing some meditation i was even doc- doing the walking meditation slow walking meditation and people would be i will i was thinking people would be thinking what is he doing this slow walking right but this they don't know this is a walking meditation so ignore those people right see they are on their path they are on their consciousness they are not deep in that much deep in the buddha's teachings but if we are deep we have to just follow our path so that's what i will i i felt is that rather than meditating near the buddhist uh, the the mix stupa the garden near the mix stupa you can just meditate a bit far there are many benches right so at least the rush is more near the mix stupa you can meditate a bit far right so that you can do this is just some ideas from my trip i am just sharing see for yourself what works for you right okay weekends it is crowded weekends is more crowded so try if you can go on weekdays but weekends you will find crowd right from 8 pm 8 am onwards you will see people coming right so weekends there will be a bit crowded guides if you you can take one you can take a guide but guides also vary right in terms of their knowledge and all so i uh, overheard some of the guides who are explaining some have very basic knowledge some have deep knowledge right so depends on your luck which guide you find in my uh, travel what i did i did not hire a guide i had a good amount of background information on the buddhist uh, the 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 place and everything and you know the history of the place so i did not need a guide if you hire a guide the only the the plus is definitely the 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 knowledge that they will give and that will give you a good heads up if you are not into the buddhist uh, this thing but uh, the pitfall is that what the guide does is that they try to cover the place fully fully they try to cover the place places quickly so they take you from first place to second place to third place to fourth place it's like a checklist because they want to finish their checklist then you will not enjoy so maybe what you can do the the middle path is that the first day that you come you can have the guide cover all the places that the guide shows you see get the all the knowledge from him second and third day then you can just go solo and just decide on which where you want to focus where i told you two things the mix stoop and the tarna temple where you can meditate again spend some time time right so that's a middle path that you can choose right okay sari purchase yeah so sari there are a lot of sari shops that are available because 
what i came to know is that when dalai lama visited here he gave machines the uh, machines for the bunkers the the craftsmen to make the sarees banarasi sarees which go out across the world so they are manufactured here so you will get like if something is costing 100 rupees 100 rupees in varanasi you will get uh, 70 it in 70 rupees in here right so it's a cheap varanasi banarasi sarees you get cheap so a lot of shops is there a uh, lot of shops is there what i found is that there is a shop straight opposite the sarna temple sarna temporium sarna temporium i will give the i will give the contact details down below it's a shop which is just right opposite the sarna temple uh, so that's a good shop i just had i purchased one saree for my wife uh, from that place and a good shop that is there you they accept all payment modes and you know credit card and everything they accept so that you can check out uh, roadside vendors please do bargain relentlessly you need to know the art of bargaining right i do not unnecessary bargain but when i check the shop the vendors they quote very high overpriced and if you are a foreigner then even a big problem because they will quote for you it they will quote even more high so if the person says 100 rupees for example there is nothing that you get for 100 rupees but if they, you start with 25 rupees and then let him come to a no regret price right which may be around 50 rupees then you can do the deal at 50 rupees this is a skill that if you are in india then you have to learn uh, that uh, skill um, with these vendors unfortunately there is no fixed price and if you are a foreigner then very very important to bargain well and uh, right so you do the bargaining right skip the non essential places like uh, like light and sound show is there that happens at 6 pm for that 6 pm you have to be there they take only limited people uh, i think it's around the museum where you have to be there take the tickets it's 100 rupees ticket and then light and sound show i skipped that see for me it was more of being in that energy being in that space and not all the light sound all these things so or uh, there is uh, i think in amita bachchan's voice there is about the they t- they take you about the buddha's life so that i know very well so i don't want to go with that for me the evening chant at the sarna temple at 6:30 was more important so i did that so uh, non essential places like light and sound show you can skip or if you have time you can do especially if you have kids then you can do don't visit each and every monastery no use right it's all the same right uh, if you want to visit two three monasteries you can visit like you can visit thai temple where is the 80 feet statue is there of buddha uh, right that you can visit japanese you can visit japanese you can visit that's it that is the two three monasteries you can visit tibetan temple you can visit right okay uh, then burmese temple don't visit there because there only the bhantas the monks live there so there is nothing burmese temple don't visit right uh, start with the meditation start the day with the meditation at dhammek stoop right so start the meditation with the uh, the day with the meditation at the mix stoop and end your day with the evening chanting at 6:30 pm in the sarna temple so that should and between that you can decide how you want to spend your time right now food is a big issue in sarnath right and this is i observe because i am a pure vegetarian right and if you follow buddha teachings you also might be a pure veg- vegetarian so food is a big issue now a lot of places that you get the food see lot of these places they do not have any organized there are one or two hotels but they are like not good i mean i did not find good hotels i mean restaurants there is one restaurant vaishali restaurant is there again it's a veg non veg combined then a small uh, uh, a place was there like bobby bhujnale where it was pure veg so i had alu paratha uh, <laughs> there at that place and two three times i went and alu paratha they made good so i just alu paratha is potato paratha stuffed potato paratha so i had that only so food is a big challenge there you don't get good places to eat uh, near the museum if you go then there are a lot of places lot of vendors who are roadside stalls that are there uh, but near the sarna temple no good food food is a issue so best carry your food or ensure that where the hotel that you are staying if you are a foreigner then you have the continental or your western kind of a meals that are available what you prefer so you check beforehand because food is going to be an issue here in sarnath it's not very good right there are vendors who on cards they sell some burgers so i had a burger and it was nothing of a burger but i don't know what they made 
right? So that is the issue. But yes, what the good thing is that they a lot of coconut water is available and uh, a mosambi drink. It's a fruit drink that is available. So you can have that. And for me, it was helpful because it weather was hot and humid. So that kept me hydrated, right? Uh, coconut then, uh, yes. Swiggy is available. Very, very important. Swiggy is available. Swiggy is basically a... Uh, uh, online platform where you can order food if for a foreigners if you don't know Swiggy Zomato I think they are available so you can order the food so if you wherever you are staying like I was staying in the Tibetan monastery I on the third day I came to know that Swiggy is available I thought it will not be so I ordered a pizza for myself uh, from Swiggy so that is very good I ordered it came in like 20-25 minutes so Swiggy is available you can download Swiggy app and you can order right roads are not good right so it's a pathetic uh, thing but Roads are not good and when I went, there was a construction happening between the road, uh, between the Sanna temple and the uh, archaeological remains. That road was getting constructed. So, a lot of dust and everything is there. So, please uh, carry a good pair of shoes, right? Carry a good hat because the sun will be there. So, carry a good hat. Uh, shops are available, medical, ATM, provisions, uh, th they are available. So, at a nearby distance. So, that is not an issue. Varanasi is chaos, pure chaos, right? If you go to Varanasi and if you plan to, like, I did not have a visiting Varanasi in my routine because I knew uh, about Varanasi. Varanasi is an old Indian city, the one of the most ancient cities in India. But the traffic is chaotic, right? And I purposefully did not visit the temples in Varanasi and all because I knew because all the peaceful energy that I generate here in Sarnath, that will get dissipated in the all the chaos that will happen in Varanasi. So sorry if it offends anyone, but I was very clear that my visit was for Sarnath. I'll come next time, which will be for Varanasi, right? So you have to decide. If you combine Sarnath and Varanasi, then all the peaceful energy that you've built up can go in all the traffic is chaotic. It's really chaotic. As an Indian, I, for me, it was like I was very, very difficult for me to navigate the traffic. I can assume what a foreigner will face, right? So decide for me, it was like Sanath and then Varanasi was just to pick up the train, right? So, Varanasi is chaos. So, be prepared. Too much rushes there and uh, people are helpful. This is the big plus of, of Sarnath. People that I found, generally what I found is the, you know, the religious places, people, they are not very forthcoming, not good and, you know, but in Sarnath, I found the people, the normal roadside vendors, See, they will have they will have their prices and they will overprice things, but they will guide you. You know, you don't need to even buy from them, but they will still they you, you, they they will guide you that what is right, what is good, what is not good. They are open. They will guide you. Even the people who are like watchmen and the you know they 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 guide you well. So that is a big plus of Sarnath. So so I hope this video. This is it. I hope this video provided you some some uh, points where you know to so that you can navigate your journey and plan your trip in a better way do share any questions any thoughts in the comment section below i'll put some uh, details of information in the description so you can check that also do go to sarnath plan your visit if you are guided to go there it's one of the four places what buddha asked the followers to visit so do make it a plan to visit there and uh, i hope this video helped you in getting a better perspective of things. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Namo Buddhaya. Namo Buddhaya.